I've been listening to the uh, narrative ar around the death of um, David. Help me with his last name, people. Floyd. No, Floyd. no, not George Floyd. The the Indigenous Australian who was killed in 2015. Um, Dungay. David Dungay. Uh, and, and so what I'm mostly hearing is that uh, all the comparisons to George Floyd, really, uh, in that just like George Floyd, he was uh, died with a whole bunch of police on top of him saying, I can't breathe, uh, and charges should be laid. And on Q&A last night, the first question was from his mum. And, and look, how tough is it to, if, I, if she was face to face right now, it would be so tough to argue with her, um, but the things she's saying are wrong. Uh, they're just wrong, and and it's tragic, and you can't take away the pain from that. But his death was incomparable to George Floyd, other than some trivial similarities. And and I'm not saying his death was trivial, but him saying "I can't breathe" is one thing. But they're telling the story about how the police were only in there because they wanted to take biscuits off him. What they don't take any time to tell you is that he was hyperglycemic, diabetic, and they were trying, they were concerned for his his health. Uh, there's this huge part of context which is entirely missing. There was no justifiable concern uh, for George Floyd which caused them to be on top of him. They were murdering him. It was violent brutality and it was completely unjustifiable. But there was a royal inquest, sorry, not a royal inquest, but a coroner's inquest into David Dungay's death and the facts of the matter were well and truly established after coroner's reports and video evidence from beginning to end. There was no cover-up and there was no criminal intent. There was no elements required for a murder conviction at all. It's impossible to lay charges, which is why the magistrate didn't recommend any. There wasn't even disciplinary. Uh, thing. There were some procedures that they said they could improve, and, and that's fantastic. Let's do the best we can to avoid that kind of tragedy Again, and, and if anybody's misunderstood me, let me clarify, I don't minimalise the tragedy of David Dungay's death. It's horrible and we should do everything we can to try and avoid it. But the media are not doing us any favours when they compare or when they allow a guest on their show to compare George Floyd's death with David Dungay's death as, as if that's a reasonable statement. It's unreasonable. There's no evidence which supports racism or murder or, or systemic racism, uh, or even police brutality in, in David Dungay's death. The media have a role to play and they are not playing that role effectively enough. I mean, mm. they are exploiting the situation. Q&A exploit the situation. They they have, in as far as I'm concerned, have exploited the mother of da David Dung Dungay, the way that they, mm. you know, when you have someone... Um, appear on a program like that and express their beliefs which don't necessarily align with the truth, no one is going to be prepared to challenge that. Such so a that fair point. becomes accepted. And the mm. same thing happens with the whole Black Lives Matter movement because, well, the Aboriginal deaths in custody, because I know of circumstances where some of those deaths in custody, some of those individuals have been um uh, not well certainly not the victim of police brutality it's not enough to do nothing it's time for us to do something not